All right, hello and welcome, Max Mathias here. Uh, today we're gonna keep going in our intermediate micro series and talk about the budget constraint. So to revisit this or to talk about it, how do economists think about consumers? Well, we assume people buy the best bundle of goods that they can afford, and in this video, I am going to be talking about the that the, they can afford aspect of that statement. I have a video uh, on preferences, which basically explains our first kind of step of how we think about what is best. These will get combined in many ways uh, in future videos, but this is kind of breaking these down into their component elements to start. So the budget constraint. I'm gonna use apples and bananas for example goods throughout. This is just to keep things concrete. Feel free to switch them to any other goods if you want. Uh, when I do this in class, I do it with good one and good two, um, just to kind of make it actually as generic as possible. But, you know, so I'm trying to make things a little bit more concrete here, but if you wanna do, you know, aardvarks and bicycles or whatever, or anything else, uh, doesn't matter. You, the same logic applies, okay? Uh, I'm also going to find a consumption bundle is a combination of apples and bananas that a person chooses. So we'll denote a bundle as just something X or Y or whatever. Um, the math notation can kind of throw people off, but it's important to remember that this XA number is just some amount of apples, like 10, and that XB is just some amount of bananas, like 5, right? So if that's 10 and 5, then I'm buying 10 apples and 5 bananas. I could also be buying 3 apples and 2 bananas, right? The, these are just stand-ins, so we don't have to keep specifying numbers every time. Uh, the last thing that we're going to say is that the price of apples is P sub A, just to match that X, and then the price of bananas is P sub B. This is the same thing, right? These are just numbers. The price of apples could be two bucks, the price of bananas could be three, they could be different, it doesn't matter. We're doing these just as placeholders. So how much do I spend on apples and how much do I spend on bananas? Well, if you go to a store, right, how do you calculate how much you spend on something? You multiply the price of the good by how many you buy, right? So if apples cost $2 each and I buy 10 of them, I've spent $20 on apples. So the amount spent on apples is that price, PA times XA. I'll eliminate that multiplication symbol, so I'll write it as PA XA just to save space, but know that is a multiplication. Likewise for bananas, it's PB times XB, right? Price of bananas times how many bananas you buy. The total amount then spent on both is how much you spend on apples, that PAXA component, plus how much you spend on bananas, PB times XB. What we also assume then here is that you are limited by the amount of money you have, right? So what you are spending on apples and bananas together can't be bigger than my income, which we call M for short, and that M just comes from the M in income, right, which you've noticed I bold there. So to kind of put that all together into what we would call the budget constraint is that PA times XA plus PB times XB must be less than or equal to M, my income, right? All this means in English is that the money I spend on apples and bananas, it can't be bigger than my available income. Otherwise, if you were to go to the cat register and try and buy it, you wouldn't be able to afford it. You'd have to put something back. So as a quick example here, let's say apples are five and bananas are 10. I know those aren't realistic uh, dollar amounts, but it just makes this math a little easier. Let's say I have $50 to spend. Buying something like two apples and two bananas is affordable. And the math I'm doing on the right there is that price of apples five times I'm buying two apples plus bananas are 10, I'm buying two. I'm spending $30 in total, which is less than the $50 I have to spend. But something like five apples and five bananas is unaffordable, right? I'd be spending $25 on apples, that five times five. I'd be spending $50 on bananas, that's $75. That's more than the money I have. Something has to go back, right? So that five apples, five bananas is unaffordable. I can't buy that much. All combinations of apples and bananas that are affordable at these prices and with my income, we call the budget set. To actually graph this budget constraint, there's a special case which we call the budget line. I know I'm throwing a lot of um, vocabulary at you. Use the pause button whenever you need it. Basically, the budget line is just a special case where that total amount of money I'm spending on apples and bananas exactly equals my income, M. So, to go back to the last example, I'm spending exactly $50. So we are going to graph this line and just arbitrarily I'll put bananas on the vertical axis. So if we wanted to then solve this kind of equation for XB to make it in slope intercept form so we can graph it, it looks something like this, 
right? Amount of bananas is M over PB minus PA over PB times apples. So if we have our uh, graph over here, apples on the horizontal axis, bananas on the vertical, our starting point is at intercept M over PB. And all that represents is if I spent all of my income, right, all $50, on those bananas, how many could I buy? So to use the numbers from the last one, that'd be $50 over $10 per banana, that would be five. That's the amount of bananas I could buy if I only bought bananas. And then we draw a downward sloping line like that. Its slope is that negative PA over PB, it's downward sloping, and then the apples intercept is M over PA, and that has the same logic as it did there, right? So those intercepts, MA and P, uh, M over PB, sorry, M over PB and M over PA represent the amount of bananas or apples we could buy if we spent our entire income on it, right? So some amount of bananas, some amount of apples. If you find those two points, just connect them with a straight line. That's another way of graphing these. That's a lot easier. Now, the slope of the budget line, right, is a ratio of those prices, right? The price of apples over the price of bananas, and it represents the opportunity cost of bananas in terms of apples, right? It's a rate at which I can exchange them between each other, right? In that case, if apples were five and bananas were $10, like they were in the last one, basically that's saying for every one banana I give up, I can get two apples with it. So to keep graphing here, everything inside and including that budget line itself is called the budget set, right? So that big blue triangle right there, which also is the blue line, is the budget set. Generally, though, we think people like to consume on the blue line. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Everything outside that budget line, though, is unaffordable, right? Given my income and current prices, I can't afford that, you know, 10 and 10, like I talked about in the example, right? It's unaffordable, it costs more than $50. So, so far we've been holding income and prices constant. What if they change and how does that affect the budget constraint, right? So this is our graph that we've had for the past couple slides. I'm holding income constant and I'm holding the price of apples and the price of bananas constant. What if I let those change? So let's start with an income change. So let's say for some reason I get some more money, income increases to M prime. If you look at the graph, how does that change what the graph looks like? Well, what I'm noticing, right, is that those intercepts now increase, right? It's now M prime over PV and M prime over PA. Sorry, there shouldn't be a prime there. Both of which are bigger than the prior intercepts. So we get something that looks like that, right? It's a parallel shift of the line. I can now buy more than I could before. And prices are constant. The slope isn't changing. The area between the uh, blue line and the green line are uh, bundles that were not affordable because my income wasn't big enough to now they are because my income has increased. On the other hand, if for some reason my income decreased, it would just be a leftward shift, right? So if you imagine going from the green to the blue, those are now bundles that are unaffordable, right? So the logic is just flipped for if income falls, right? So as I said, income changes are parallel shifts of the budget constraint. The reason for that is prices are not changing. But what if prices do change? So we're going back to imagining in this world, income is back to M. If apples become more expensive, so basically what we're saying is now this price of apples increases to some higher number P prime, how does that affect the budget constraint? Well, we can think about this piecemeal. If I buy only bananas, I can still buy as many as I did before, right? Price of bananas hasn't changed, my income hasn't changed, so that intercept for bananas, M over PV, is the exact same. But if I move to buying only apples, I can't buy as many as I did before, right? And the reason why is now M over this P prime is smaller because P prime is bigger, right? It'd be like dividing what was 50 by five by now 50 by 10, right? So the amount of apples I could uh, buy because of the price increase has decreased. So that is reflected with a steeper line there, right? The slope has increased as well because the price of apples has gone up and our apples intercept has fallen to this new M over P prime. So price changes I like to think of as pivots. One intercept is going to remain constant. It's always going to be the price that doesn't change while the other one changes. For price increases, it's kind of a pivot inward. For price decreases, it's a pivot 
outward. You can actually buy more than you could before. The area between the blue and the red budget lines are now unaffordable. And the reason why even we couldn't buy as many as we did before is because the opportunity cost of apples has increased as far as talking about bananas I have to give up. Right? So if I want to spend any amount of apples, I'm now spending more money than I had to before. That means I can buy fewer bananas. So everywhere in between that blue and red line is now unaffordable because apples became more expensive, even though my income actually didn't change. So to recap the budget constraint, it gives uh, it depicts affordable bundles of goods like apples and bananas, given prices of those goods and income. We showed how to draw that. Income changes shift the budget line. Remember, they are parallel, making certain bundles affordable or unaffordable depending on income increases or decreases, and those slashes uh, match. So basically, if your income goes up, more things are affordable. If your income goes down, more things are unaffordable than they were before. Same hand, price changes pivot the budget line, changing one intercept while leaving the other the same. Bundles will become affordable or unaffordable depending on price decreases or increase, right? So if price goes down, more bundles become affordable. If price goes up, more bundles become unaffordable. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you got anything out of this video, please consider liking and or subscribing, and I'll see you next time.